Hey everybody, this is Jeeves and I am so excited to be coming back here on the channel. I did say I was going to do something different and that it is that I'm doing and I'm bringing here to the channel of one of the very first bands to go on this endeavor with me, Lucid Planet from Australia. How's it guys? Good, good, good. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, not good. too bad. Pretty chill. Oh, God, I love that. Now, now you see, uh, for the people who may not know this, uh, for like time-wise, it's 11 o'clock my time. And what is it, 7 o'clock, you guys? Exactly, 7. I believe uh, it might even be later for you at this point, but yeah. No, it's 11 o'clock for me, and uh, oh, yeah. there we go. And, and my eyes are open. It's just the, sh <laughs> the shadow. It might look like I'm baked or something, but I'm not. It's just... 11 o'clock. That's awesome. Some of us are baked, some of us are not. We'll, we'll never say. Good. Good. Well, <laughs> you, you, you have to work it out, man. Well, funny you should say that because, um, you know, I was uh, I'm making myself very well aware of uh, your band doing a little bit of research and everything. And uh, I realized that you guys are very well steeped and also it's kind of, the, kind of a convergence of psychedelic metal and some other great, you know, uh, hybrid uh, techniques and stuff to write your music but you know before we listen to our, our uh the track that uh, we're going to listen together uh, by the way folks uh, what we're going to do and what i think is going to be something i will continue to do for a while is uh introduce a band and then uh, listen to a track of theirs all the way through not my usual stop and check kind of thing and then after that, we'll talk about it and I'll go back and, you know, we'll just make this really fun. This isn't about, you know, in and out, uh, hurry up, get a video in and out, people's, you know, retention right now. This is about just having a great time, getting getting to know the band members a little bit and a little more on an intimate level when it comes to the music breakdown. So um, all that being said, why don't we just start with some music and then we can catch up on... Um, uh some of the fun stuff about the breakdown and everything uh but before we do because i'm moving like a glacier why don't you guys introduce yourselves really quick sure michael luke darcy so i play guitar and ableton push so a bit of a, a pad kind of thing yeah i sing and play bass and i do guitars a little bit of percussion and production kind of stuff and so he, he produces and everything in in the band yeah so oh great that's that's underselling just a little bit. Yeah, it's not this just man, it's not just a bit of production. This man, <laughs> this man, are, are geniuses in their own right. This man does the entire website, does the entire payment system, does everything like himself. He basically is a is a mastermind. He does all our visuals, does all our videos. This man produces everything and mixes everything and masters everything and is a genius in his own right. So like this is this is why honestly the independence is even possible for us, Jeeves, because. We've got some minds in the band that can just make shit happen. It's it's a blessing. Well, that that the great thing is that's uh, you know uh, like every every band once the formula starts to click, you know, and everybody's em in embracing and supporting each other through the you know a creative journey, you know that those were some pretty sick accolades, obviously to, to pay your band members, but um, you know all of you coming together is what making. The band, obviously. 100% is exactly right. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's actually, it's a 33% full split. Like, if one member was to drop out, it would absolutely fall to shit. Yeah. It would, Fast. It would, yeah. <laughs> um, to be honest. <laughs> well, that's, that's actually, that's really unique because, I mean, in a time where the world is at will, you know what I mean? Have you ever, have you ever heard that term in business and corporate? You know, hey, people are, people who get fired at will, you're replaceable like that, you know, and you know, it's good to know still part of the process of being a band, humans in a relationship together, creating music and stuff that, you know, it, it's very rare that somebody, you know, drops off and, you know, another band member comes in, is able to fill the shoes, you know, uh, and at least maybe move forward. But um, but I, I feel I'm just totally pumped that you guys, you know, reached out to me. And wanted to uh well you just wanted to say hi i'm the one that asked you guys hey you like how about if i listen to one of your tracks right in front of you you know <laughs> <laughs> no, good timing good timing okay so what we're gonna do uh is we're gonna be listening to a track um tell me briefly really quick about uh a track that you sent me to listen to the song is organic hard drive it's the third song on the latest album um and it's a I won't say too much about the stylistic idea of it. It's definitely uh, the first song on the album 
initiates the vibe, you know, cap- encapsulates the general sort of direction we're going. Second one t- t- takes takes it on a moody yeah. trip, and then yeah. and this third one sort of sends it uh, forwards, you know, as uh, and hopefully the statement is we're not afraid to take risks and do what's interesting to us, uh, despite the limitations of of the genres that we might be sort of fitting into. Mm. Well, this is, uh, I'm really pumped to hear this, especially when I'm looking at the, uh, the kind of genre breakdown that's up here on this uh, YouTube uh, uh, post, which is progressive psychedelic tribal metal. <laughs> what, what, that, what salad bar does that not encompass just about anything really exciting is about to hit me in the ears. So, <laughs> all right, then. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up and let's listen to Lucid Planet Organic Hard Drive. All right.
Wow. <laughs> that was insane, guys. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely what you want to hear. Wow, that was insane. That's, that's the reaction we're hoping for. To be <laughs> that, well, here's, here's the thing. Um, it, it was such a, it was, I, you know, I really, now I really get how what you put on YouTube when it says progressive psychedelic tribal metal. In the, in the way that you laid it out there, it had there were so many unique textures there that it was kind of like trying, for me to try to wrap my head around it. This that last you know minute and a half that you had going there, actually, it, it sounded like the whole thing was in kind of the key of C, was it? Uh, B flat, probably. No, that wouldn't no. sound flat. That is, it's not. It's not B flat. Uh, it's two above C. I think. Oh, okay. yeah, well, D, yeah, well, it's, it's in D. D. It is in D. It's, it's D, D, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'm definitely not Rick Beatos. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, no, <laughs> no, neither are we. Even. I'm actually not even sure if it's D, to be honest. It's, it is D. It's fourth fret on a drop B flat bass. <laughs> That's all I know. Oh, fourth geez, fret. Okay, oh, okay. okay. D sharp. D or D sharp. Yeah, right. well, the key doesn't well, matter. <laughs> <laughs> to us, it, it, anyway. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was, clearly. It, it, it was such a punch. First of all, um, the the ethereal and the depth of everything that you guys focus on on that um, is so unique. I mean, there is such a is, is that that must be the Ableton thing, uh, which I'm not familiar with. That's that you're using to drive all the synth sounds. I mean, what what what, what palette are you pulling from for that? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. So, 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 so Ableton is the software, is the is the door, DAW. Oh, it's the DAW. Um, okay, right. Exactly, uh, and and then we use it for live as well. It can, so kind of controls our live show, and we use that as an inch. Ableton's kind of blurs between a door and an instrument in su uh, as such, but uh, Darcy's you know more equipped to handle the uh, you know how it came together kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, what we want to know, like how how all the sounds come together, like how that was figured out, like mm. what were you wanting to know there? Well, what, I mean, the, the whole, the whole thing was such a trippy experience because it took me personally through a couple of like, you know, uh, theater of the mind twists in my head. And because I'm kind of like, you know, it, it, we had a little bit of punchiness up at the beginning and the vocals sounded fantastic. The engineering's insane. Vocals sounded fantastic. Um, you know me in the bass. You saw me a couple times going, <laughs> you know. And then there was that one little section in the song where actually the bass was, you were up like like, like on the 12th fret or something, just doing, you know. And then we hit with the arpeggiations. Hello. Jeez, that was really super slick. That sounded like a little Phrygian thing going there, but really super tight. I am in such awe of musicians such as yourselves. Um, and that kind of stamina or that kind of, t I, I can't do it. I mean, I've, like I've told you before, I've written a bunch of music and it's okay if I turn on my gear and I do it for 40 seconds and stuff, but a whole song 
Uh, I don't have that. That's another reason why I enjoy listening uh, to you guys as a whole, uh, as a band yeah, and everything. Band and everything. That's awesome. The what was um, the decision to kind of um, like this is really super definitely your own trip here. The decision to put in a little bit of that house kind of part. I don't even know if you want to call it a house. When we get four on the floor, saw trance, saw trance. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. Like we're from Australia, and we've got a um a fest. We've got like an underground bush festival kind of thing going on here. We call them doofs in Australia. So mm. uh, so it's kind of like a uh, it's generally over over a weekend. You come there. Uh, it's very involved. You know, it's, it's music, arts, it's decor, and everyone kind of brings their own piece of the puzzle together. It's very community based and yeah. stuff like that. So, we grew up in the metal, rock kind of thing. You know, through high school and stuff. And then, I don't know. Didn't find didn't find as much community in that world. Sometimes, uh, maybe some people say they do. I haven't personally found that when I go to a metal show, I don't really feel community. I'd, I want to watch the band. That's I kind of go there sometimes just by myself. Sometimes I watch the band and then I kind of fail. Different people have different experiences, but with Doofs, it's very, um, it's community first. And then that style of music, you know, kind of brings everyone together. And, and part of the lyrics is like sync to one pulse. So like sync to the same sort of, you frequency. know, frequency. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and we've kind of, that side of things, I think, you know, we're inten we're intentionally bringing it in, but it's kind of part of our development as young adult. You know, mm. like from our twenties to our thirties, mm. that's the been the community that's <clears throat> accepted us the most, that we've been the most with that that we can connect with the most. You know, is the Australian doof scene. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So a lot that that's the decision to bring that in was kind of it's 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 as deep as you know like because that because that means da, 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 whatever but it's kind of a, it's in a sense it's just like because that's what's we love metal and we love that so if we can stick them together and a lot of people from that scene are like previous metal heads that kind of have a bit of a similar experience sometimes just like mm. yeah don't really find the connection with metal as metal's more yeah i can only speak for myself but it's more of a personal internal thing and and psytrance and Doof culture is more of a community-based thing, so to blend them sort of helps with that, I think. But there is a crossover, like, that's, that song was about, like, trying to figure out, like, what is this crossover that we feel that all these other people feel around us? Like, all these other people are into, like, we've all got, like, very similar interests with, like, not everyone of Doofs and all that kind of stuff, but, like, with a lot of people there. So, like, what is it about this particular music that's being played at the Doof and like all this other like metal music that everyone's into that share Similar. like none of the same quality, mm -hmm. nothing like, oh, yeah. you know, and, and some, you might have like metal purists who despise like uh, electronic music and, and DJs and all that kind of stuff. Um, the opposite I don't think really happens. Not many DJs and side trance guys and, you know, bass house guys really like, no one's really disliking metal, um, but it happens in the opposite direction. And it's like, what's what's bringing everyone together so that song is essentially an exploration of like um of what is what do these two genres have in common i think it's got something to do with like just the energy of the song like to get a bit woo woo it's like there's something about these two genres that contain a certain amount of like i want to say aggression but it's not aggression it's like yeah, release maybe. Yeah, some kind of like, yes, I can finally like be myself somewhere, and like mm, amongst, yeah. amongst people that I love. Yeah, you know, and, and, and they yeah. accept me for being both, a bit of a weirdo. Or both whatever. those genres, genres, I would say, um, like mm. definitely, uh, like exhibit that exactly what you're saying. And I will say just quickly, like, I, I have found like I've I've been part of many mush pits, and I, like I feel like definitely the metal scene, like there is a definitely a, a definite community sense in a mosh pit and a, and a sort of jumping around and throwing your arms around but then like jump, going down on the ground and your mate helps you up and you're all just loving the sort of the vibe and the atmosphere but that being said what what michael said earlier like the the, the doof scene is a different like, like we made a post about esoteric festival which we went to which is a seven thousand strong artists cultures storytelling sort of like you know crazy event um and honestly like the the sense of a community, a commu uh, community and, and, and raw sort of human emotion that you experience at these kind of festivals 
utterly unmatched. Uh, I've never experienced a connection level, like a human level of connection like that in anything else. Can't compare to anything else. This particular track, though, what I loved about it, well, there's a couple things that really stood out to me is the use of the enveloping and stuff in the synth pads and the sequences that were being done. Very uh, ethereal and, and really mess with your ears kind of vibe left to right. A lot of these kind of uh, um, the enveloping volume up, down pulling, bouncing back and forth, you know, swimming around. Um, the going from the drum kit to the house kit, uh, the EQing and everything and the uh, compression was really seamless on that. You know, however it is that you process that whole thing, because that could be a real trick, man. That's, you know, going from a kit and I don't even care. And I, and I don't even care if it's program kit, meaning it's, I'm not saying that yours was, I'm just saying the trick in engineering is, you know, um, trying to keep those things seamless, uh, but yet still give the experience of the change up that you guys were doing. Also, the tone of the guitar, I really loved the trickery. Now, uh, the, Obviously, the you know hard left right. You guys have heard me talk about that on my channel a thousand times. Um, you know, are done by doubling, or sometimes be it double or used a doubler or whatever the case is. But what I love is when engineers or when people sit in a room when it's engineering time or when it's mixing time, and we say, "Oh, right there, let's go ahead and make it really canned in mono. Let's take it down. Let's break it down to here. Let's give them a different experience." You know, and I really like that. Let me ask you guys. Are you all in the room during the mixing process or do you just kind of peek in on, you know, when, when, he, when you're doing your job, do you guys peek in? What's up? The, uh, like, the writing, the production and the mixing are all like one and the same. Like they're kind of done concurrently, if that makes any sense. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it kind of gets up to, I want to, during the demoing and the demoing process is just the writing process and it is also in part the recording process and it's all melded together there is a final like mixing process where i go through all the songs and go like how can this sound a little bit better and how can this you know why isn't this kind of like hitting the way it does and like i'm gonna say half the time the reason it's not hitting a certain way is because there's like a fundamental problem with the sound or maybe even the structure of the song uh, that like might need to be revisited. Hence why it all becomes a big bit of a blur. Like we're yeah. trying to figure it out as much as, you know, when I don't have this like clear idea in my head, I'm like, okay, we'll write the song with the intro and then the guitars come in and then the drums come in and, uh, you know, and the, the dynamic should be like this and I'll mix it this way when I'm all finished recording it. Like it's nothing like that at all. It's, like very very non-linear all over the place but um in terms of mixing like uh they they're definitely in the room while i'm mixing at like any given moment but like i could just be mixing it by myself and being like sure you know how am i gonna like battle this problem because sometimes a problem like you said with the um the organic drums going into like the this massive side trance kick is like how are you meant to match like side trance and like you know bass music and yeah that's a trip kind of it's, stuff. A trip. it's a loud genre mm. um and it's kind of like difficult to put that up against metal music and rock music which typically is like uh it can be loud it probably can be as loud but it's not as like tight and like there's there's humanness to it you know there's yeah. the, the, there's no humanness to side trance and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, one's like oh. one's human human tight and one's mathematically tight. Yeah. So side trance so, is is mathematically always gonna oh. punch harder, you know, in a sense. Yeah. Trying to like sonically match these qualities, like because when it was just like kind of dropped in, it was essentially how it started. Was like you create this side trance part and you drop it in, and then like switch between the side trance part and the metal part, and you're like these sound like way totally, too different totally. like i've mixed the drums a bit weird so i have to like go back and mix the drums and do all this stuff that's like super boring to sit there and kind of watch like i feel like most of the time when i'm mixing i'm like i i've, I've, I've got the objective of like where to go so i'll do all the stuff that i need to do and then if i show the guys and they have some kind of objection or they want me to turn way. something up or down or whatever yeah. then we'll go for that yeah, um for sure. but like you know, I try to get it done 
in 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 my own time because it's it's difficult to have an interjection in when sure. you're like sure. shooting for something. Off shot, definitely. You've got like someone coming up like, oh, why don't you do that? And you're like, oh, oh no, you can't, you can't do that. You need <laughs> to run the idea out. And actually, just what I'll add to that is definitely like you're right. Like most of the production side of things definitely happens on Darcy's in Darcy's own time while he, while he's just just tinkering away and he's like, I might try this, I might try this, but he keeps us so fully involved in every step of the process. Like, hey guys, here's the new version. And he's fully open to that, especially in Lucid Planet 2. Like, we evolved a lot as collaborators and musicians, and he sent us some, he sent, him, sent us new mixes and, and new ideas, and we were sort of just like, yep, that sounds good, or like, try, tweak this, tweak this. And he's very open to sort of that whole thing. And honestly, like, that's what Lucid Planet 2, it was so powerful for, is like the, just the very open and non-egotistical just communication and compromise That's every true. every yeah. single step of the way the compromise really yeah. what let me i did some reading up on some of the comments on some of your videos i was looking at some of the other things and um you know your tracks are fairly long and they're very robust in the sense that it's like you're really you're really putting what you want to put out definitely not in it to a minute to win it radio you know play at least not yeah, not at least not in the Spotify, you know, uh, tracks that I check. Uh, it's it's what check. we want to hear, man. It's what we want to hear. And that's so that is sick. That is just so cool. Um, I I did, and I couldn't for the life of me figure it out, but I did catch some people say that, you know, a little bit of uh, your influence may have leaned from another band, or maybe you being compared to another band. And I I personally, I couldn't. I couldn't pin it. I, I I I was like, really? How? Where? I mean, I think it's because I know where that dormant influence comes from. Being as old as I am, not that old, but you know, rhythmical changes and all these kind of you know, are, um, you know, syncopations and meter changes and and everything. I mean, that that actually is a, a 60, 70 fusion kind of style that just kind of re uh, re ups itself into different genres. So, you know, to say a particular band started a certain style and now you sound like that particular band, I could see where you stand on the shoulder of giants and you could see further, there's that saying, you know, and stuff. But I, I, I didn't pull that, um, that comparison except for one thing. And I think it was the artwork I looked at. I was like, you know, I, that, that to me, I think was the one thing. Yeah, I, I think it was the artwork where I went, that does look kind of close, you know, but not not in the performance or anything and you guys have such a unique uh vibe that seems to transcend that what what would you call it a site site trance yeah yeah that ethereal ambient kind of glide and what i loved about this track too is that it had dynamics into it that especially at the end i was just uh, looking over some old sound waves from some files that i engineered and stuff about 40 years ago and Nowadays, when I listen to a lot of tracks and stuff and I'm recording it, even though I'm, I might record it off of Spotify to drop it into my files to render when I do a video, 80% of them have a candy bar syndrome. And that's what I call it as old fart engineers. It's when the master files just look like one black line. You know, and there's no breathing room. There's no, you know, flex. And I felt, but I felt good dynamics in this. I felt... You know, it doesn't necessarily have to represent represent itself in normalization and loudness. You know, on that final output, but I liked how the track drifted me into that trancey kind of vibe. I didn't know what to call it until you um, said what it was. Is are most of your tracks over that six minute length? Like when you're writing for yourselves to put out, um, you do obviously want to uh, connect with a certain kinds uh, of, of listeners that vibe to, I guess, that community you were talking about. Does that also in part and parcel mean that tracks have tendency to be that six minute plus kind of thing because of that, you know, maybe, maybe like it takes a few minutes to kind of steep into it. Yeah. I think we are like um, with that album for sure. There is like an element of like, let's explore and the more time you're given to explore in a song the more you can like seamlessly move between parts and um you know create a bit of a um like a, a bit of a journey within the song so mm. the longer it is the more you can kind of you know get into the nitty-gritty and do that um there are like certain aspects in our like new writing will like 
especially my new writing where I'm trying to like get to the point a lot quicker uh, just for my own like because I've been writing such long songs for like such a long time I'm like I'm, the, I'm not really writing like three minute like two to right. two to five right. minutes you know I'm not writing any of those right. songs right. I should probably like figure out how like how to write that so that if I'm wanting to get a point across a lot quicker and like not lose somebody's uh, attention or willingness to listen to a song and listen to the whole point, then like I should, yeah, that's like something I should definitely, like whether I'm actually going to do it or not um, on any albums, like, you know, that's remains to be seen or anything like that. Like, you know, it doesn't really matter, but I would like to know within myself that, I can write something like that and get to the point um, and give a little bit of like contrast to uh, writing long songs because sometimes writing a long song can just be like, you can just take it anywhere. You can be like, oh, let's just sure, throw this sure. and just drag that on for another couple of minutes. But to keep it interesting and engaging and keep it changing enough is like a whole different story. So I think like um, being able to like expand your horizons in terms of writing So with that particular process, um, you know, it's, it's kind of one of the things that I've kind of listened through this last two and a half years on the channel, what I've been doing, listen to a lot of music that a lot of longer tracks, uh, especially longer complex tracks, you know, with, you know, bands that really go way out there in their production is that I kind of have to sit back and say, well, what's the discernible hook? of the track. And that's when I have to step. That's when I personally have to step back and say, wait a second, let me take myself away from the expectation of that experience of a hook and let myself to allow myself to sink into the track while I'm listening to it. And through that evolution that I've been going through in the last two years is where now I can remove myself because that's the weird thing about doing reactions when I used to do them is, you know, trying to highlight the things that are memorable and stuff. And, and then I find myself, oh my God, this track's 10 minutes long. There's about a dozen things about this that's memorable. But then if I put myself in that mind frame, that, that frame of mind too much, uh, I find that I miss the energy and the essence of the track as a piece of artwork, you know? And, um, and what I think was really super unique. And I did, I, I listened to a couple of, just so I can get familiar with, um, you know, I've, I did that one, of uh, your tracks last year, a year and a half ago, but I wanted to kind of dive back in a little bit is the fact that it's a complete um, uh, emotional journey that kind of takes you through kind of an unexpected twist, but kind of keeps you in that kind of kaleidoscope experience, if you would. Yeah, the, the, long, <laughs> the long tracks, I guess they're harder to pull off than a short track, but then a short, you know, like they're, they're hard in different ways, I guess. But I think also the long tracks for us, uh, we're, we're often thinking, you know, the album is going to be a, tr a track as well kind of thing. So like say the outro to that song that we just listened to, that gives a bit of breathing room before we go into the next kind of scene as well. So sometimes the the journey of the track is part of the journey of the album as well. And, that, and that's why it's important for us to sort of you know, ebb and flow and do that kind of thing. And then really, yeah, I, I think, I think when it, when it sometimes prog, prog bands, you know, when they go on long, long tracks, I won't speak for other prog bands, but for us, it, it's very important that there's a reason why you're in every moment that you're in. It's not just like, let's just riff around here. Let's just do this. Like there's a, there's a, sure. there's an energy sort of direction that it's heading in and, and sometimes dipping down before you dip back up or before you explode back up uh is really what makes the next part make sense if you just sort of dropped into that part you would maybe get what you're saying originally with that candy bar thing where you know it's like cool part after a cool part but if you're not really like breathing a bit and recentering and forgetting your expectations and then moving into the next part it might not hit you the way it's meant to hit so yeah i feel like the energy flow is a bit more not like organic, but a bit more um, like real to like human experience. You know, it's, it's not always just like go, 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 go. It's it's go for a bit and then 
breathe a bit, recenter, then go back up yeah. and Twist and that kind of thing, you know. And so so what I just add to that, I definitely think that's that's definitely true what I've everything I've just heard. I think honestly like the, the biggest thing with, with track length for us, I'm actually just looking at our track lengths now. So we've got twelve minutes, five minutes, nine minutes, four minutes, nine minutes, four minutes, five minutes, and then eleven to twelve minutes. And then a ten minute song at the end. <laughs> but interestingly, I was just looking at like you something you said before, Jeeves, maybe sort of realized far out, like we've got like all these long songs. Do we have any shorter, sort of accessible sort of tracks? Honestly, the thing that I've realized about our length of song is that we sort of seem to just write a song and let it naturally progress and if it's sort of like my sort of philosophy about it all is if it it doesn't matter if it's a four minute song or a five minute song or an eight minute song or a 12 minute song if it does everything if it communicates everything that it was supposed to communicate if it really gets that whole message out that you wanted to sort of and it progressed in like it progressed in that natural way and it feels like okay cool this is the middle this is now it's wrapping up and just you, you just sort of naturally let it progress it ends up like you do end up with some long tracks and you end up with some shorter tracks, but we just develop songs until they're finished, honestly. Um, and whatever length that sits at, that's, that's the length of the song. And like, like Michael was saying, you know, the, those, those ever important transitionary sort of sections, which are sort of part of, like you heard at the end of Organic Hard Drive just then, that's a tra that's, that end section is actually a, it's more of a, like it's definitely some breathing room and sort of like, hey, we've had some craziness going on and now let's just breathe a bit, but it is a transitionary kind of thing into that just to sort of almost like just take a bit of breathing room and just and just sort of like brace yourself for the next step that's about to happen and that's that's i, I love that kind of songwriting and we we agree on all that kind of stuff so i think another thing also i mean um luke what i find um the fact that a good percentage of this track was instrumental your voice was phenomenal on the track but i love the fact there's just something about um you know, I, I am I am a goober for bass, and I don't know why I'm not a bass player inherently. Um, but um, there was a, a couple of things that you did at the very beginning uh, that had some really nice uh, dynamics to it. And I love any time bass players do things where they, they've got their pattern, they're going, and they're going to gliss up a little bit and get up into, bite into those notes and stuff like that. There's such a, and I think that just comes from me personally. And guitar players do it. I mean, and uh, uh, drummers, uh, it's kind of hard to, I mean, they can velocity up into their stuff, but it's just kind of that, those kind of glides, they just kind of, oh, they just pull, you know? And I, what you did at the beginning, I thought was really sick. But when, when you're in a, uh, it, uh, and being I don't obviously know your full discography, um, I, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that being the bass player as well as a singer, um, you just get just the same amount of joy whether it's coming out of here or it's coming out of here, and it's just really about the body of work. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, I mean, so like a couple of things there. What's interesting is that the bass, Belusa Planet Two, the bass was essentially written entirely uh, independently of the vocals, so without any vocals consideration at all, literally oh, nice. zero zero at all so the bass was honestly starting to be written and was honestly pretty much started to be completely finalized and developed well before vocals even came into it because we did sort of have a transition of vocalists and we actually auditioned quite a lot of vocalists michael and i auditioned like many many sort of different sort of like yeah, musicians and it's sort of like that and then I, then I sort of started to just jump in and i started to do it all and and then we're like, okay, like, and, you know, like the, the whole sort of charade of, 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 of sort of challenges and issues come up. Okay, now I'm going to be playing and singing at the same time. Okay, I didn't ever expect to oh. be, <laughs> try, try, I, didn't, I didn't ever expect to have to yeah. sing the, these, this vocal line that I've written specifically for vocals. And now I have to s s s like, like, do this, do this, spin oh, place. Yeah, oh, and, and, and live has been an absolutely monumental challenge, but also a, a fantastic learning experience uh, for me, especially like I've, had to jump into a whole new thing and honestly like that uh, it's been it's been amazing uh like a, like and i'm sort of handling it i don't know they'll they, they can tell they might tell you otherwise but <laughs> i think it's like we've got a show coming up in a month and i'm i'm pretty confident that we'll it'll be a good performance well i you know not everybody could be getty lee or sting or you That's know, right. and, you, yeah, know exactly. and, you know I, i've never had that capability i've just been a studio you know mouse my whole life and i just can write whatever i want and sing it overdub push it out i'm done 
Speaking of shows, this is a nice little transition. Um, so when you guys are out and, you know, playing your shows and stuff, uh, obviously, um, you, I guess, would bring along, uh, do you bring along uh, your uh, Ableton and everything with you as well? And is that a complete uh, production, meaning it also connected to the lights and the whole it's yeah. developing actually yeah, yeah. yeah. so in terms of visuals and lights that's really developing sound wise it's really on the way man it's, yeah. it's really cool so it controls the mm -hmm. um yeah at this point it's controlling what's the backing sort of more atmospheric stuff that we can't play live and it wouldn't Coaches. even make a lot of sense to play live it sure. plays the click in our ears it controls the so i've done i do all the visuals and stuff like that like the the, the music video we just watched so that then becomes the backdrop of the live show, oh, obviously. Okay. And then okay. Ableton is yeah. speaking to the visuals desk to make sure that that's perfectly in sync at every thing. So Ableton, and then, and then also Ableton is controlling our effects changes, vocally, bass, and guitars, and the keys thing that I'm doing. Um, so it really is like the, um, you know, we kind of make a system that then can run, and then we sit on top of that and then play within that sort of thing it's a bit of a different approach obviously to the old school you know bring some marshall cabs and just bash it out it's kind of thing yeah. but it's, um, oh setups change we don't use amps anymore man we don't we literally don't use amps it's it's very weird we started as a certain type of band and that's not at all what it is and even the setup that you sent yeah. and we've we've now reduced our setup it's like a box like that <laughs> and like honestly we just sort of plug in through the through the the pa and and we, we might bring amps as a backup but weirdly enough it's sort of such a reduced it even blows my mind like yeah there's anyway. a bit of like there's a bit of depth to the whole setup mm. like i with the with the audio stuff and like how things are like things are automated and pre-thought and planned and all that kind of stuff like and there's probably a lot of people who like don't don't much agree with it and i like i get it. i've played in bands for ages like I've, I've been in bands that have no click tracks and all that kind of stuff like mm. um i I, to I totally get that aspect of it um but i i enjoy doing this and i kind of see it as akin to um you know some kind of like improv comedy thing or like some kind of improvisationals that like you could like throw out whatever you want uh guys let's play this song and, like you can have this free time to talk to the audience and like it might in some ways feel a little bit more natural, but um, what we're doing would be more like a, like a play or something like that where mm. things are choreographed and, you know, we're, we're not choreographed as in like our physical movements or anything like that. Like, yeah. all right, Darcy, to that side of stage. <laughs> that's, like, the next, that's the next step. But like in terms of how the, how the uh, audiovisual aspect of it all kind of plays out, like that is definitely thought about and choreographed and like yeah, yeah. Pu sure, pu purely sure. because we want things to sync up with visuals and lights and all that kind of stuff and it's like something that's not a new thing but but doesn't that have a lot to do with also the 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 uh community you're performing for also is very accepting of uh a performance it's, i don't even want to define it as that kind of a performance just a performance you know and it's because I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy that is. Um, I will, first of all, I don't have really a lot of ex any, if any, experience live in that whole thing. But I've not. I, I've never been the guy to say, "Well, they have a computer over." There. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. They, I got to tell you something. I've known since my dad's days in the '50s and '60s. I mean, look at look at a lot of the old TV shows. And a lot of the, you know, I don't care what they were. They were playing the tracks. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's about the performance. It's about the energy. I can understand the visceral kind of like, I, I guess there's a little, oh, there's a there's a few ruckuses going on, but I guess there's one right now. I, I can't remember the, with Motley Crue. And I, uh, I guess it's. I, guess I saw that. I haven't looked into it, but yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know that I guess uh, I, I'm sorry. Which was which was the musician that um, is not doing well health wise out of uh, Motley Crue? What is it? Nick Mars. It's Mick Mars, I think. <coughs> I'm gonna go to peace. So. Go go go. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Right. So one of so one of um, one of uh, his pet peeves was that he was just really pissed off. They got to play the, the tracks now, and or at least that's what it's alleged and stuff. So I can understand that if you're coming in 
from a band that has roots, you know, and then you drift into that part, I can understand it could be off-putting. But I got to tell you, in the last six months, some of the tracks I've heard in some of the more progressive bands that are actually that are absolutely monsters, I I see them. They got they got the laptop. Just even if it's for the pads, or even if it's you know, um, no, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen I've seen videos. I'm not going to say the name of the bands. I don't want to get into that shoving match in the comments, but where I just go, and and I don't mean it that way, but I'm just saying I can see the keyboardist doing this. Going, he ain't got that interval. He doesn't have the intervallic split. Go, yeah, but he's playing. But there's stuff happening over here, you know. Yeah, the, I think there is like there's a tendency for a lot of like maybe people who have never used a, a laptop setup or like computer setup at all. There's a tendency for people to think that like. What's going on on the laptop is like you just DJing, like it's playing the tracks. Like nothing is being, nothing is being like recorded and then played automatically through, like, except for the backing tracks that we can't play, like a pad or like, um, you know, little blips and blobs and all that kind of stuff. Like stuff that's it's been, peripheral, peripheral, stuff that's been produced. Yeah. But like guitars, like we're still performing, it is just all going through, um, it's it's all through Ableton now. So like yeah. where like I'm going in to a uh I'm not sure if you're familiar with like neural DSP and all sure. this kind of like sure. yep, cool. I have the so Nolly. I have your, the Nolly. Yeah, the Nolly, I got the Nolly, I got the Petrucci. The Petrucci oh, is what we're using live. So we're going into Petrucci, uh Neural DSP, uh then into a cabin pulse that isn't within Petrucci, I'm pretty sure. Um and then that like, so let's just say my channel specifically, it's my DI guitar into like an amp thing of Petrucci without the cab on. Then that channel is split to two different outputs. One output goes through and into a cab impulse. The other output goes yeah. externally into a power amp and a cab so that we can like, it, like you're essentially using Petrucci as like a, a the preamp goes into a power amp into the cab so that we can have that stage fill. Um, because if you take your in-ears out or you're right at the front of the stage, uh, you miss out on a lot of like the stage noise. Like if we, if we right. take everything right. out, it's super quiet on stage. If there's no cabs on there at all, like we're not running mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And that can have its positives and it can have its drawbacks as well. The main positive would be that like, it means there's no spill going into Luke's mic. Mm -hmm. He's like, like front and center, the cabs are behind us. There's a whole bunch of cab noise going into the front. Like that kind of makes sense to me. It's like you wouldn't want much of it, but we can control the loudness and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. The the main drawback to not having cabs is that like if anyone wants to stand right up the front of the stage and like really kind of check us out, then they can't hear anything because the speakers are behind their ears, like blasting out. Into the right. You see, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about that. I think actually one of my favorite. One of my favorite artists is from Australia. Uh, is Pliny? Is is his name? Yeah, his name? Oh, cool. Yeah, and um, well, he's he's Australian, and he's my one of my favorite artists. But global, but musically, he's just outstanding. Um, but yeah, um, from what I've seen on some of the latest videos that he's released from his live shows, I, him and a lot of the people in that that fusion rock metal prog rock metal vibe they all have their laptop and they all are there are certain things that just has if if you want to because that's the one thing is that because because of production sometimes you cannot on stage reproduce uh you know the exact vibes and stuff so um you know that's that's a, a, a very unique thing but the one thing i keep kind of drawing myself back in i don't know if it's a, the right comparison but here in or not here in the mainland i'm in the middle of the ocean <laughs> but they have things like Moon Tribe or these desert raves um, uh, of that nature. I don't. I don't think Burning Man is one of those uh, type of events. I, I'm not too sure. I think Burning Man's a little bigger, a little more. Uh, I don't know, pop culture ishy. But the ones that are smaller, the ones that are like really, and I don't mean smaller by size or smaller by artist value or anything like that, but a little more. Um, a tight, a compact community and stuff like that. Yeah, and and that's 
in my mind, I just, it's, it's still marinating in my head. Your track is still, you know, uh, playing in my head actually. And that's where it's just pulling me to. It's pulling me to that kind of like, I could see everybody just, it's not about any particular genre. It's about just getting, just letting your eyes roll back in your head and just go for this journey and just theater of the mind, soundtrack of life kind of vibe, you know, and you know, that's, that's what I, that's what I fully pulled from the track. I just, I love this open experience like this because I'm seeing a, a even though your track though, you know, is a couple of years ago, I see it just as, um, um, as, as, as powerful of a representation of music that I hear that's being produced now still up in the forefront. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, it's like, yeah, that sounds like something they did a while. No, no, it sounds like something that I could it could have been released now. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Cool. And I actually like that's that's awesome to hear you say that. I really like really appreciate. It. And that's that's a lot to do with this man and his and his and his production skills. And like, it's interesting that like some people actually said, like you know, have have said in the past that th this music might be appreciated a bit more in the future than than even now. Um, and that's a really huge compliment to sort of hear. That's like. It, like and definitely rings true with what you were just saying then that's that's cool yeah no i mean that's that's the way it feels to me because i feel like right now there's a lot of big bands right now that are that are really kind of floating on the ambient ethereal pads now somewhere in the background things are starting to change up a little bit you know um i think i think the metal scene as a whole is getting so progressive and there's such incredible talent um that that I, I, I'm in, in my head and what little, what 800 videos I've done in two years, you know, there's, there's so many incredible riff salads that are going on out there that every now and then that even though um, there's still as musicians, all four of us, uh, especially since you guys are very rhythmic as well in your, in your um, arrangements and, and compositions, we 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 jive in a different way. We're the ones that uh, not saying that that the pure listeners don't, but we can listen to stuff and go, ooh, 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 oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? We we go through those tweaks and bends and stuff like, oh, check out that, oh, that was sick, that was weird. But how how far? My my thing is is how far can we push the ear of um of of and the growth of metal in that trajectory before we have to find a way to kind of even this out and I and I feel that that's possibly where some forms of metal I'm not going to say all metal because then they're going to give me the people's elbow in the comment but um you know some forms of metal are now embracing more of that ambient ethereal uh atmospheric additions not leading in with it so much or anything but they're 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 becoming more and more part of production and be it either synth produced or module produced or engineer produced post-production, you know, putting in infinite, you know, reverbs on certain, you know, crunch chords that might ring out with a nice big fat pre-delay that just kind of pond, just kind of pulls us in. You know what I'm saying? Engineers, I think also have taken uh, our music in general, uh, not, not so much mine anymore, but, uh, the music in general, I think engineering is becoming, you guys may have heard me say this in some of my videos, that I so believe that at any given time, um, an engineer is just as much as part as the band, band yeah, uh, during this process, sure. even though most of the times a band member, you know, such as yourself, you know, um, is doing all that. Uh, I still believe without a doubt that that the engineer is part of the band during this whole process. Massive, and actually yeah. that's so true in this band. Uh, like we, without the collaboration of the, the direct engineer, I don't know how we could have done, honestly, especially Lisa Planet too. Like uh, we wouldn't have been able to do that without the band member having his head around that. Yeah, because I think there is a bit of a, uh, like Darcy was saying earlier, bounce back and forth. So we, me and Luke mm. will bring something to the producer, he'll produce it, we'll take that, Ta tinker it bring it there. back, yeah, and, and then sure. it goes back and forth. But if it was, yeah. If it had to be like write the song in its entirety and then come to the recording studio yeah, so they no, can record it, produce it, and mix it and all that it, stuff. Yeah. We don't really I don't know. We, we could probably we, do it, but it just doesn't seem as interesting as what like but it's, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. I'm telling you, like having the, the direct and like I will say that he and I uh get anal retentive about the, 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 the lists of things that the lists of changes and fixes that go to the producer and he just rolls his eyes and goes like dudes like 
Oh man, like, <laughs> but honestly, he just gets through it. And honestly, I'd say that Lucifer Planet 2 was such a collaborative, hectically and tightly knit process that he just put up with it. And uh, like, I honestly guarantee that we got an ultimately unique and interesting and the best result we possibly could because he put up with a lot of our shit. To be honest, there's no yeah, nutshell. There's like, I think the integration of the engineer into the band and all that kind of oh, stuff it's amazing. means that like, if they come back with a, you know, let's change this or let's remix that or let's reproduce this. It's like, there might be like a certain like way that, you know, it's like, oh, turn the guitars up here. It might not be as simple as that. I'm just using this as an example. It might be that like a whole bunch of other stuff needs to be reproduced in order to get the effect that, that you're looking is for desired that, you're saying. that like you're these saying. guys are saying. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, we, can we don't we don't have that. We don't have the like the the, the head around the whole the IQ, EQ side of things and the mixing side of things and the techniques that he talks about. Sometimes he just starts saying things, and I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I, <laughs> all I want is the bass up, man. All I want is the bass to go up. I don't even know what you. But he says the bass does not need to come up. This needs to happen, and this, and this, and this. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, let's do that then. I, I've like honestly, he and I, and me especially, I will admit, like, <coughs> I have no idea what goes into what he does. Uh, he, him a little bit more than I, but it's sort of like, it, it, yeah, anyway, so, yeah. Well, you know, um, Michael, um, what, where, where do you see, like, are, uh, number one, are you guys uh, working on new material and where do you see the creative uh, product of, productivity of Lucid Planet going? So we're definitely working on Loose Planet 3 now. Uh, one of the songs off that will be playing live next month. Next month. Um, yeah, month. Yeah. And as far as the whole trajectory of the band, yeah, I think that's definitely Loose Planet 3 is our top priority. <clears throat> we're touring, well, we're in the talks <clears throat> with an Australian tour now, so that's going to be yeah, a yeah. big yeah. focus. And the Australian tour is just the first step you know you got to tour nationally before you can tour internationally yeah. so i i think maybe international tours at least maybe to europe or something next year would be on the cut like that seems to be the yeah. progression it'd be um, great if we could do that, that yeah would be, be good. and <clears throat> yeah just in as far as because like the band is is like you know when you do it all independently the band is like the the music and the mixing and the songwriting and the live and stuff like that's obviously it is what else could it be but it's mm. then it becomes massive yeah the business and the and the email sure, list sure. and the and the merch and how does how does the whole universe sort of yeah. feed itself so that not only do we have a strong community but that the, the project funny. can can maintain itself and then push forwards like you know once you get enough momentum and stuff then it's it's like it's not about the money as much as it's about like this is self sustainability of a yeah. project to be able to to reach higher plateaus because if we if we're not selling you know and we're not pushing the business side of it we're just writing some tracks on our downtime yeah, you know have, like people to enjoy it. there's only so much time you know like it's just it's just not really going to self sustain so um, part of the independent thing is like is this big juggling kind of like ten fifteen different roles at all times marketer producer lyric writer yeah. storyteller yeah. whatever you know i could kind of just website designer exactly website yeah design. yeah, yeah uh, the list just goes on you, you like it's it really just yeah. endless but and, also and, it, yeah. and, <laughs> yeah. and the last thing i'll say just in regards because it's kind of links with what Darcy was saying with the you know having the producer in the band having the web designer or having the oh, visuals sure. maker exactly. in the band Having all everything more or less in the band, in apart house, from Mr. Crystal Face, he's the artist that did the art, and he's and he's the next closest ally that we have. Um, having it all in the band means the feedback loop is really small. It's not like oh, the designer needs an email. I type that up to him. Right, he might get back right, to it two weeks right. later. He might send back why he can't. You know, more money, more this, more delays. Right. It's like if I'm making a video and they want things in it just it's it's instantaneous almost we can go 20 iterations within a day honestly oh, yeah. within everything that we do the website yeah. every, your business decisions everything so there is a level of like it's like an independent artist is at a disadvantage because they got to do 15 different things they're at an advantage because they're quite nimble yeah. in their decision making it can it can iterate very fast so sure. everything we do is very iterative uh in terms of like 
it will get to version 30 within five weeks sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. because there's, because there's no doubt, there's no reason why you wouldn't just go, here's the next one, yeah. feedback, 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 until you've got something very uh, condensed and pure. I think that's fantastic. I also think though that, you know, that's the other thing too, is, is what it is that the independent artists or even the major label artists nowadays, I mean, there's no escaping uh, the, um, the condition of the, music environment as far as band touring bands merch unit sales and you know the things that you got to take on yourself you know there's a lot of horror stories that are coming out of major labels where the artists are being pressed to have to do x amount of tiktoks per you know it's it's not See, you know what wow, i'm saying what no, I'm saying? like i can't even <laughs> say how much screw that man like no yeah i mean but it's it, it's 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 tough going for you know the industry moving forward. There's always going to need uh, be artists that are uh, going to be such as yourselves, such an important part of other people's lives and the soundtrack of their lives, the performances that they're going to remember when they come see you guys. You know, it's just we've seen the overbaking of the financial and the and the and the snow globe and the mystique of what it's like to be a famous big band with it's it's it that snow globe got shattered and and then even more so with covid you know even bands that i even yeah even bands that i know that um i have friends that are in um the the the, the travel now because of the gas and eh, but, eh, but, eh, but there's like whatever margin of money that they used to make pre covid now is almost running at the negative. And the only way that sometimes they could find that edge is like, oh shit, everyone's doing vinyls. We got to do vinyls or we've got to do, and that's not a bad thing too. I think vinyls are great. I think the collect collectibles are great. I think what I call the trunk sales are very important. Uh, even though no more computers have CD drives or anything like that. Yeah, like yeah that. I know. You know, at the end of the day, if you did have a CD and you, know, you sold that for $10 that was signed and all that, that's a collectible. It's not necessarily you know uh go out you know you're gonna pop it in somewhere to play it you no, know that's but, kind of, that's you know, but the, the physical product like you once you hold that thing in your hand like you can you can buy and 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 download sort of video games off all these platforms but having the thing in your hand it, like i don't know it's the same as and it's the same as music products and the same as like dvds and blu-rays like that physical thing is and especially as an independent artist we rely so heavily on those products and people don't it, it, it want that nostalgic sort of like or or um, collectible kind of value to our, to our items that we rely on that yeah and i think we do yeah. um really lean into the idea of like and this comes uh from the very particular artistic vision of it um if you're gonna buy the album like rest assured it'll it'll come with a 16 page booklet it'll come with some stickers it'll come with a, a all the know, access, all come with a stick of incense like we really do want to make it like I do, really do want to make it so like when you open it you go like fuck yeah i'm glad i supported glad this I and now yeah. i have this this is kind of like a magical item in a sense um it's got the music it's got the art it's got the message it's got the the thing that i can connect with and i can have an have a real life experience that's a bit more deeper than like pressing play on a shuffle spotify oh, playlist spotify or something, song, you know? yeah, like, yeah music becomes a little bit more throwaway and it's fine, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't really have one, I'm not really generally leaning in the thing, like it used to be better when people asked to do this or whatever. It's just a different thing. But but, different if, if, but but I feel like with us, like we do really dive in, like go deep with the idea of like, if you've spent your money to buy a physical thing, like it's going to, it's it's as you good as we could possibly we make do, you know, like it really is not just a CD on a, and it's the same as the, the digital. It's, or something. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. a cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it comes from. I think the special thing with us, it comes from us. It comes from our hands. Like it, honestly, <clears throat> right out in that garage is where all the packages get sent and all the packages get like the, like all yeah. all done. And you all can the, see the boxes of vinyls <clears throat> just up here. I just saw. I was just looking at them. They're, 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 they're vinyls, <laughs> yeah. actually. Yeah. So all the stock is. This is my house, actually, and this is all the stock is here. Um, and out in that garage is everything we own is is out there and it all happens it all happens from us like it like it when someone sort of sends an email and say guys can you can you sign it for us it's like that's the independent advantage it's like yep easy can sign it for you we can like and and it's and it's the, it's growing eventually like we want more products and more things happening and 
And it's it's fun, honestly, running that business side of things. Like, it, yeah, we we got a little bit lucky in that, like, I don't mind the business side of things, or I don't mind the idea of like I got to go out and package the things. Mm. It's kind of like uh, sixteen people this week wanted to exp- have hold our thing in their hands. That's right. Yeah, it's that's not, not a bad problem. Can't really <laughs> be a, a thing that I'm like, you know, yeah. Got work to do. Got work to do is always for us. It's like if there's work to do, is it's that's a really really good thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, that I, you know what I love about that. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I, I hung I, I hung out there really quick uh, for a little longer second when you said you put an incense in there. That's so cool. I love that, and 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 that is, and that's what speaks truth to your your um, gratefulness of the community in which you guys flow in. You know, you understand your. You're a part of that community and stuff like that. It's those little things, you know. It's like dynamics in the song. Or that old saying, it's the space between the notes that makes the song. Well, in this case, those little dynamics of, a, of, of that is so personalized that, you know, this this in time too, 20 years from now, when you look back at this time in your life, you know, everything that you guys emotionally and spiritually seem to be, and I could see, you know, in your faces and stuff that you're putting out to get this work delivered, to put what you have in it, Um there's no illusions uh, or delusions, if you would, short term of the go- of the goal setting and what we need to be doing as much as it is let the energy of what our music is about represent wherever the universe may take us. We may stay in Australia, we may go around the world. It could be, you know, 15 minutes of fame now is 15 seconds of fame. So things change really fast. But, you know, the pure thing is, is that you guys have, you know, all that creativity wrapped up in a bundle between the three of you. And I think that's amazing. Now, that being said, uh, where I will put this down in the description, but just so that you could say it here, where can everybody get a hold of where you might be playing next, merch and stuff? Uh, what URL can they go to? Definitely. Yeah. So, um, so where we're playing next would be found through facebook now um and there will be a a shows page on the website maybe even by the time this is up so maybe it'll be on the website too but more or less the shows we generally announce through social media um so primarily facebook and instagram we do have an email list that we're underutilizing now but we have been building it from the ground up and that's going to be a definite um big part of the whole experience not only community wise but value wise as well so the very email list will be where to go very soon very soon yeah yeah. very soon that will be the place and as far as um definitely everything else uh merch cds vinyls extra stuff uh lucidplanet.net so www.lucidplanet.net that's designed by us every everything there's no um, third party anything in that there's no shopify there's no Literally anything I sort of coded the whole coded by this co- guy, coded, you know, <laughs> from, from for better or worse. Uh, it was, it is what it is. Co- coding We're the, here now and we can't go back. I, I think, I think <laughs> honestly, the thing with that is like, like I was saying with the iterative process kind of thing, like we started as mates playing tunes yeah. and stuff, and then we needed a place to launch this, the first EP and then the first album. So it didn't make sense. Let's get a big platform. Let's do yeah, this. He knew how to do it. I knew how to code it. So, so let's we're just, just like, oh, let's just do it ourselves. And like, fuck, 10 years yeah. later, we're here and we're like, shit, dude. Yeah. And, then, and, like, <laughs> and then we need more products. So now we need a shopping cart rather than just a one-off purchase oh, thing. So then I this coded that. It's so, insane, man. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but in doing that, it means that uh, if you purchase something for $20, then we get twenty dollars uh and that's That's pretty extreme you know uh as far as the split you know if you buy it from a band on a major label i won't go into the numbers that's up to them but it's it's not a lot you know it's 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 fuck off so you think you're buying a twenty (laughs) dollar metallica album you're not giving them twenty dollars you're giving plenty of people some money and that's it is what it is you know but if you buy a twenty dollar album from us yeah then we get twenty dollars and that twenty dollars isn't going to us, us it's, no. it's, it's not getting distributed <clears throat> a 33% split. It's staying in a band it's account so that we can, from the band. we can buy the, um, the merch, the next pay, for the, the next pay for the services, weeks, yeah. do all that kind of stuff. So that is um, a pretty powerful thing, even though, you know, through the iterative process of designing it all and building it up step by step, um, it's kind of like that's definitely a lot more work than if we just did it this way. But in doing it this way now, we've got 100% ownership on everything that we do. And we've got a very solid 
internet presence mm. um, and email list and everything that we've done the hard work to develop those that community and those dedicated followers who are now on our email list that then can know about the things that we're doing and to know about the products and it's a definite like you know if, if there's the two paths just get on a label and just go for it you know and just hope for the, cross your fingers and hope that it doesn't screw you mm. that's definitely one way or do our way which is 10 year long as shit yeah roundabout way the, of the long the long road. building everything <laughs> from the ground up and 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 doing all, all the hard everything is a hard slog but by the end of it then you get uh into a situation where like we could release lucid planet 3 now to thousands of people and we fully just need you know fully independently own, own it all. and get 100 percent of the profits all rights reserves <laughs> and be able to just maintain in that sort of sense and release new products and release new things and mm. it's a pretty it's, it's definitely the long game it takes a, it's a long sort of trajectory but it means that we're kind of secure there's no platform that can ban us there's no people that can disappear because that because facebook is now no longer the cool thing and we put all our ba eggs in that right, basket like, right exactly right, we right, own everything right. you know yeah well i gotta well, tell you this has been a wonderful uh little hour and change we've spent together and uh, i'm really super grateful that you guys had the opportunity and the time to kind of hang out with me and and share with me uh this track and stuff and um great hearing you talk and like like and getting to know you man this has been sick oh it, it's it's I, I look forward to this new iteration on my channel that i'm doing i'm 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 trying new things and and uh, i'm so excited to have you to be amongst the first uh bands to actually uh do this kind of uh decomposer lounge long form uh podcast i almost i almost said i almost said the r word but i didn't <laughs> <laughs> Not going to say the R word, the R word. But, um, <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> um, so anyhow, um, uh, I guess I will have all the contact information down below. I'll also put the Spotify link down below uh, just so that, you know, people can uh, click on that. And uh, and then outside of that, um, I, I, I again, I can't thank you guys enough for spending time with me on this. And, and uh, I really believe that your trajectory and where you guys are going is going to take you a little longer than two years out. I think you guys are going to be, yeah, definitely, sure. yeah. I agree. Definitely. Yeah. you know, so yeah. you know, we like to awesome. remain hopeful. So we have enough energy to push us to those next years. <laughs> and the next two. Yeah. That's, but, that's what it's all yeah. about. As long as you still are able to kick on your gear and be creative, you know, there they'll get the, the, there might be that time where, you know, uh, the energy doesn't, you know, you don't feel like turning on the amps or the guitars or you don't feel like doing something, but you know what, what I will tell you, out of my own experience, even though it did get to a place in my world where even when I got a job, as grateful and humble and blessed as I was to still get called at my age to do work, it does. It did get to a place where I was like going, I got to work. It does happen. <laughs> you know, it does actually get there. It's like, oh, I got to, you know, it's not like, wow, I'm going to write like five chords and I'm going to get paid for after a while. It's like, rug theory, you know, so. No, it's, so, it's yeah, on the way. It's, a, it's, it's work now. It's work. Like we, we fucking love what we do, man. Um, and I love, it's, and, it's, I, and like, I vicariously, vicariously, vicariously living through you guys right now. Cool. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's All good. right, and guys, listen, like, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. And uh, once again, all the information for Lucid Planet is going to be down below. Uh, I want to thank all of you on the channel for hanging out. And, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to your thoughts on not only this format, but the uh, track that we heard earlier. And uh, also looking forward to your support to Lucid Planet. So see you guys later. All right.